Hello and welcome to Angel Talk. My name is Kara and I have the honor today of interviewing Carrie Martin. Welcome to the show, Carrie. Thank you so much, Kara. It is so like it is such an honor to be invited to come on and talk with you today and to just share my story or whatever it is that we're going to talk about. I'm really excited. Thank you for yeah. inviting me. I met Carrie last year at our Olympia watch party and she blew me away with her mindset and her story and everything she's been through. And I know that this episode will be so inspiring, especially if you're a mom out there, if you've ever faced any type of obstacle, Carrie is definitely going to inspire you. So I'm so excited for everyone that's listening right now. So Thank you. just to start off, <laughs> let's talk about the first thing that I knew about you. And that was your blog. You have this great blog and you have this mindset about saying yes to life. Can you kind of talk yeah. about that a little bit? Yeah, well, it encompasses so many areas of my life. So I might just touch on little bits, um, but um, it really it's born from probably mostly the last four years, but really the last 20 plus years, like big life experiences that have driven me to um, embrace challenges as gifts. And, you know, the concept of the obstacle is the way to, you know, to turn, to flip things around and turn, like turn your tail of woe into a tail of wow. Right. So like anything that comes along my way now that I could look at as like, oh my gosh, that's terrible, ugh, awful. I flip it around and say, okay, what are the gifts in this? What, you know, what can I turn into good out of this? What are the opportunities that are hiding in this that I don't see yet because I'm too narrow sided and short sighted in seeing just what's in front of me rather than the big picture. So um, that's why blog is about the, the blog in particular is about the last four years mostly, which is when um, I learned almost like actually a week ago, on one week from now, four years ago in a week, <laughs> um, I learned that I had hip dysplasia, that I was born with hip dysplasia and also had, you know, ruined my hip joints from, you know, running and doing activities on them my whole life. And I had osteitis pubis from having babies. So I had bone on bone in the pubic joint. So I was facing like multiple surgeries and years of rehabbing and everything and no more running ultras for me for a while. You know? So all of that. And so it, it just, it became like, okay, this is like such a gift. That was my immediate viewpoint of it. Like, wow, I have an opportunity now to like make my body into something it never was. I can be whole. I never had that in my whole life. What a gift. Look at all I the things I'll be able to life. do. Right. I mean, it's, it's the best way I can think of to approach life in general, because otherwise you just get stuck and like, where, where do you go then? Right. So, yeah. Um, so so my it, blog right? is writing through that. Yeah. One thing you said that stood out was turn my woe into wow. Yeah. Exactly. I love that because every competitor has some type of story, some type of obstacle they've overcome. And this is a sport that attracts the crazies, the discipline, uh -huh. the people that are willing uh -huh. to work through it. So you hear all of these stories. So let's kind of talk about your journey. You were a marathon runner and then you learned you have hip dysplasia and then how many surgeries yeah. did you have? So I was running ultras. My husband and I were like going all over the world to run like multi-day stage races, like across the Alps and across um, the, uh, the Rockies as a pair. And we ran some other like closer to home races, 50 miler, 100 milers and stuff. And that was our thing for a long time. But then, um, then I, then I stopped to have my last baby. She's six now, but <laughs> so, and then, after, and I, you know, I had her at 40, 40 plus. So after having her, I was like, what is wrong with my body? This is like, not right. Is this what happens yeah. when you have a baby after 40? Like what, what is wrong? So I finally went to the doctors to see, and it was like Pandora's box discovering that like I had all this and it's been there my whole life. And I didn't know, like, I didn't even know that was a people thing. I thought hip dysplasia is a dog only for yeah. dogs. What do I know? <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, so that, you know, it was a shock of course, but then to say, okay, well I can't run. Definitely can't run while I'm healing through all of this, but what can I do? You know, and it really wasn't until 
a year and a half ago that I decided, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm at a point now where I can lift weights. Why don't I try this? You know, like go from one extreme sport to the other extreme yeah. end of extreme sports and stuff. So <laughs> why don't I go do this? Right. I'll hire a coach and I, at the very least I can do the nutrition and really nail that and learn that part and lift upper body and slowly work my way into lower body weights and everything. And it's been like, see, it's just like, again, the obstacle is the way it led me yeah. into and a new way on my path. You've been yeah. very successful so far because the only show you competed in, you literally won every single category that you could win, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> that was really wild. So yeah, we've been training for a while and I was like, okay, it's time to go do a first show. And um, and that was you know, like just almost two weeks ago now. And yeah, I did. I won the novice overall and the master's overall. And then I won the overall <laughs> overall. The open so, overall and you won yeah. everything. I know that that was really wild. And um, it, um, for me, I have to say, it was just really validating to to go through all of the challenges that I had to go through to even get started in this sport. Yeah. And to come through it and be like, wow, I can really do this. You know, I can go from being in the bottom of a really big hole and yeah. rebuild my whole skeleton, really, you know, yeah. and and do this. That's amazing. If I can do this, anybody can do anything they want to do if they decide to, you know, you just you've done have to show up and do it. A lot of hard things in your life. You've had, how many yeah. kids have you had? So I've had four. You've had four kids. You've run yeah. ultra marathons. How many miles are those? So the shortest ultras is 50 K anything longer than a marathon is technically an ultra. Okay. So it could be 26.3 miles and now it's an ultra, right? Okay. So, but they usually start at 50 K, which is 31 miles. And then there's 50 milers and then hundred Ks, hundred milers, but then there's all kinds of odd numbers in between. And we've done random things like the grand Canyon rim to rim to rim oh, and, wow. you know, like from one side to the other and back as a run just for fun because you can't have races in national parks. So yeah, for fun. Right. So yeah. So like those kind of adventures, just, I love them. So you're drawn to very difficult things in life, aren't you? Yeah, I am. My mom, my whole life has yeah. called me an est person. I do everything to the est fastest yeah. Smartest, you know, everything S, 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 to like to, yeah. the, to the nth degree that I possibly can because, you know, we only have a certain amount of time in life. So if I'm going to pursue something, I'm going to give it my all. I'm not going to do it part way or sort of kind of. I love that. So I met <laughs> Carrie, uh, I said last year, but then again, this year she came to the Angel Fashion Show and yeah. she blew me away on stage. You walked on the stage with so much confidence as if Thank you had you. been there so many times. Like, I think, well, do you think that you naturally have this sense of confidence because you've overcome so much? Um, well, I've been on stage a lot, not in, a, in like for performing my, with my body, but, um, as a musician. So I've been a classical musician since I was six years old oh, and both of my degrees are in classical music performance. So, um, my degrees are in French horn. So I've been okay. playing my horn in orchestras forever and ever, but I started on violin at six and added the piano at seven. So I've been performing in that capacity for my whole life. Okay. So I did, I mean, going on stage for the fashion show was very different, but I definitely tapped into my prior stage experiences when I went out on, yeah. you know, for the fashion show. I was like, okay, I know how to be on a stage. I can do this. Right? So, so it's very rare to meet someone that's a French horn performance major, isn't it? Yeah, it totally One is. Of my, my older sister is actually a French horn performance major. Okay. <laughs> so you get it. I, I do get that's it. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, now that I know that about you, being that type of musician, you have to practice by yourself in a little practice room for what, five uh, hours a day? A lot. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm not doing that right now, but you definitely, when I was like through school and then in my early performing career, there's a lot of time spent in practice rooms and yeah. rehearsals and Yes. <laughs> I find Definitely. it so interesting talking to competitors because it seems like everyone has this background that gave them the discipline of what it takes yeah. to do a prep. What do you think was harder, running an ultra marathon or doing bikini prep? Um, I think, 
Well, is that too hard? Pre- <laughs> no, because I'm comparing it. Well, do you want me to compare like the prep for the running of the events too? Because yeah. that's like, okay, the prep for running an ultra is more than the prep for doing bikini. Yeah. Because of the time involved, because you need to rack up a lot of weekly mileage. So it's hours a day of time on feet. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's a lot and you're pretty darn beat up from that. And so the time spent in the gym and doing cardio for bikini is a lot less. However, the intensity is different. Yeah. So, I mean, it is kind of apples and oranges, but if I had to pick one that's harder, I'm going to say that the ultra prep is harder. So what advice would you give someone who's doing their first competition and say that they are determined to do what you did? They want to go to their first show and just kill kill it and win the <laughs> overall. Do you have any oh my gosh. wisdom? Well, oh, okay, so that's hard to answer because I, I didn't go with like any goals or intentions other than to just, this is my first show. I'm going to just go with an open mind and an open heart and meet people and just have this experience, right? And it, to me, it was a celebration of, oh my gosh, I overcame all of this. I learned to walk again all over three times and all, I, all everything that I went through all those years of surgery. Um, this is my celebration, but I can do this. This is amazing. I love so that. I did, well, that was, that's how I wanted to go in. So, yeah. you know, so I didn't go with a, a, a highly competitive mindset of like, oh, I'm going to win this and, you know, like anything like that. So, um, but maybe that's the mindset to go in with. Maybe that is the answer then to go in with just completely like humble and open-minded and just see where it is. I mean, because you really like, how can you say, ah, oh, I have a goal of winning because so much is outside of your control. Yeah. And show, right. Who shows up and like how everything goes and somebody can trip and fall. Maybe you do, right. Like who knows? So many things can are outside of your control. So just control what you can control and go and enjoy it. I guess that's yeah, what I control, control. That's a good yeah. thing you know, when you hear my dog barking in the background. Control. <laughs> exactly. Control. Well, look at all, the toys all around me, behind me. Yeah. Control yeah. what I can control and let the rest go. <laughs> so how did your training look after your hip surgeries? Do you have any trouble yeah. doing, because I know glutes are the main focus of bikini yeah. and your hips are, were kind of messed up. So how does that work? Yeah. Okay. So, um, I had the extra pleasure of getting like, um, adhesive capsulitis, which is basically frozen, you know, like frozen shoulder when the, the capsule closes in and you can't move your shoulder. Well, I had it in both hips at the same time. So we had to go back in. And so now we've done 11 surgeries and I have one more to go <laughs> but, oh, wow. um, to go back in and like open up the scar tissue and get it all going. But I had like no range of motion or anything. So just even moving was really hard. So um, once I worked through that enough, we started adding in weights, lower body weights. And that at first looked like a squat where I might squat down six inches, like with nothing, just standing up and down, like very tiny little range of motion, no. you know? like very, very little. And then finally, when I could get like enough range of motion, I might get on a leg press machine with no weight, zero, and just start to do little teeny tiny baby movements and, um, you know, and then built it up from there. So I'm still like, compared to other girls, I do not lift that heavy yet just because I'm still building. I can't yeah. just get that hard yet, but you know, I'm obviously getting enough to create some symmetry and be able to compete. So yeah. And you it's working brought a competitive package. So you're yeah. on team elite physique, team elite physique. Yes. How is that? Yeah, Adam is my, it's awesome. Adam yeah. is my coach and I absolutely love him. <laughs> yeah. He's he probably awesome. listening. So shout out to Adam. Yes, what do you, I love you. <laughs> what do you like about team elite physique? I love, okay, so I'm more of a type A analytical yeah. type of person. Like, okay, here it, here's your instructions. Go execute. Tell me the results. Here's the data and go. And I like that. So um, that's, and that's what I do. Okay, here it is. I don't ask a lot of questions unless I have questions and then they're answered. But, you know, otherwise it's like efficient, yeah. you know, and, and it's like, okay, you know what you're doing. I'm going to give you the reins trust you because I don't, I've never done this and yeah. let's go and let's see yeah. what happens. And so that's what I did. And obviously that works. So, <laughs> so yeah. awesome. it worked because not only did yeah. you win the overall, but you looked phenomenal. Like you were flawless you. and you're posing and let's talk about your suit. So what color did you wear on stage? 
So it was, um, I don't know what to call it, but it's my, it's my, my purple one that yeah, it's a um, it's just hologram cranberry. No, it's on per, uh, hologram purple. Per, hologram purple. Yes. Uh, yes. Hologram purple. And it's, um, the, the new ombre style. What is it called? I'm Nova. Thank you. I'm drawing a blank on it. Yeah. So oh, it's dark crystals on the outside and it's a little paler on the inside with some AV on it. And I got feedback from the judges that they just loved the suit and they loved it on me. And, to, and if Ooh. I like, they said, if you feel comfortable in that to stick with it, cause that's like my color. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so we've yeah. gotten a lot of feedback from the judges this year about the Nova design yeah. because it almost adds some dimension to your chest yeah. because of the gradient yes. pattern. Yeah, I love that. And I love the new bottom cut that I got too. It's the micro cut. The micro. So, so yeah, someone like me that's more petite gives me like more glutes. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good thing to talk about. So do you mm -hmm. know what your glute measurement is? 34. 34. So if you're listening, yeah. Carrie can pull off a 30, she can pull off the micro cut because her glutes are very conditioned and she has a glute measurement of 34. So someone like me who might have conditioned glutes, but I'm taller. So my glutes are like 38. I can't pull that off. So you always want to think about your proportion. So for a 34 inch glutes, micro does look really nice. Yeah. That's awesome. I didn't know that. So that's good to yeah. know too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teaching through you. <laughs> yeah, that's this awesome. is a show. It is in nine days. Oh, doing another really? one. Yeah, yeah. We had, we had, was I'm um, doing the branch warren in okay. Denver. Yeah, then, so we had planned these out beforehand, thinking that my first show would just be like a warm up show, just to see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> like, did not expect all that. Yeah. So and we're like, well, we may as well still just do this one. So that's what we're doing. So, are you doing the mile high? No, at this point, I don't have plans to do that. So okay. I, I mean, I, I'm imagining once we do this show that um, we'll pull back and just go do some a lot of building because I still have a lot of building to do yeah. all over. <laughs> right, so, so. For those listening in the Colorado area, we will, AC Bikinis will be at the Mile High. We are going to set up Thursday before the show at the Armbrew Bruce Gym in Denver and be doing a full day pop-up shop consultation and all sorts of fun stuff. So if you're in the Denver area, definitely um, connect with us on Instagram and we'll chat all about that. So are you going to be at the show then? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm definitely coming to your pop-up and I'm coming to the show to watch and support friends and yeah. watch it all. So of course, I absolutely plan on being there, but so, I don't okay. think we're going to compete. If you won the overall at a regional show, it's kind of like well, maybe you're ready for nationals. Do you see that in the cards this year? Yeah, I think that we're targeting doing masters nationals. Okay. It, but, you know, at the same time, I'm like, well, yeah, I qualified, but am, am I ready? And also, do I have the um, experience to go or do I gain the experience by go? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, but I think the plan is let's just go. Let's why not? Let's go try it out and see. So, yeah, because otherwise, I'm not sure what I would do to like, why would I keep staying at regional shows? Right. Yeah. So, I want purpose to what I'm doing. Yeah, I love that. And you have a lot of background in discipline, endurance, and, you know, stage performance. So, even though you haven't been on stage that many times in this sport, you can yeah. transfer that over. I mean, it looks like you already yeah. did. So, I would say yeah. go for it. Yeah. So I think, why not? Right. Yeah. I mean, the worst thing that happens is I get dead last, but I get a lot of experience. Yeah. Right. And that's valuable to me. <laughs> yeah. So um, going back to your blog about say yes to life. So how do you yeah. use that? And I know it also had something about if you're 1% better every single day. Can you talk a little yeah. bit about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's the compound effect, the 1% rule. Um, so with that, like, you know, every time I go to the gym, it I do everything to my very best of my ability, like for that day, maybe I'm not as strong that day, but I give it my all with every single move, every single rep, every single thing that I'm doing. I don't miss, I don't skip out on five minutes of my cardio just because or whatever, because I want to give my all that day. And that all for that day equals 1%. Let's call it 1%. I'm adding 1% yeah. to my physique or my conditioning or my whatever, right? And over time, those 1% compound. 
It's not one plus one plus one. It's one plus whatever compounded and then one yeah. percent and then, you know, on and on and on. So all of that adds up to over time the success that I'm looking for. And I can look back and know that I didn't miss anything. I didn't cheat on anything. And so however things fall in the end, I gave it my all and I can be proud of that. So, but yeah, the 1% rule, I just think of that every single day, even when I, you know, with my food and everything, I'm like, yeah. no, no, I'm not, it, you know, if I'm trying to weigh out 72 grams of rice, if it hits 73, I'm plucking that little bit out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do it. Yeah, you're going to you know? so do it. For some of our listeners who might've not been following along all the way, I went to recap some little nuggets of wisdom you shared. So turn your woe into wow. You know, yeah. if, um, if you're feeling down on yourself, see how you can change that into a, an overcoming of the obstacle. So I think yeah. that's really great advice. And then also the 1% compound effect. That is amazing yeah. to think about every day. Cause it's something that it's easy to hear and think about, but it can be hard to implement. So just, do yes. you have any advice for how listeners can stay on track? I think just think of that like every yeah. single day. Cause it's so easy to think, Oh, this one little thing doesn't matter. It's okay. Just skip this little part or whatever. Right. It just, it does. If you realize that every little bit over time doesn't just add up, but it compounds like keep yeah. that in the back of your mind. Like, Oh, you know what? This, this is, Every, if I, even if I go the other way and do the cheating part, that's going to compound. That's and so, scary. you know, right. So it's not just two yes. linear, like two lines, like diverging, it's curves diverging with whichever path you take. So compound in the right way. Yeah. <laughs> right? So I read Atomic Habits, which I'm sure a lot of people have read yeah. that listening. And they said something that really resonated with me. And it was, let every action you do in life be a vote for the person you are. So it's yes. like, it's, you're not doing the actions that show what type of person you are. It's time to reflect because it exactly. can either go up or down. And that's a really great way to think about it. You can either be positively growing 1% compounding every day or yeah. negative. And it's kind of scary yeah. if you don't keep on top of it. Yeah. Right. It really makes a big difference over time. It's Kind of yeah. cool. <laughs> so do you have any habits or rituals that help you stay motivated or help you stay on track? Um, I, I think it's just a, such a lifestyle now that like if I didn't do it, it, you know, if I didn't do all my steps every day that it wouldn't, I wouldn't feel right. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Like if I just, if I'd skip brushing my teeth or something, like, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> that's weird. So um, it's just part of your lifestyle. It's who you are. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I love it. I get up in the morning and hit the floor and, run, and get running, you know, yeah. with all the things I love to do, you know, start the morning with some gratitudes and just get going on all of my things. I mean, I'm also so busy. I have blocked out my day. I have my morning, like a little bit of time for me, but then it's kids out the door. Then it's my workout time. Then it's like afternoon is kids and dinner and family time until they go to bed. Right. So I have yeah. like big chunks that it, that have bookmarks and, that I can only fit things into a certain way. So um, it's kind of have to <laughs> have yeah. the discipline to work within the constraints I have, but yeah, just, I wouldn't imagine, I just, I couldn't imagine going to bed um, regretting missing something or feeling badly about not doing it. Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I love habits and I'm fascinated yeah. with the idea of habit building because yeah. once you build the habit, it's easy. Yeah. But building yeah. those habits is very, very difficult. So yeah. what what is it just all of your life experiences that has made you so disciplined? Or what is there anything you can attribute to it? I, I think I'm gonna attribute it to just life, you know, being the age I am, having had kids first X number of years, you know, and the patients through my surgeries also, you know, all the things that have added up over time that definitely when I was half my age, I didn't, <laughs> didn't have the yeah. same kind of like patience at all. And, you know, the, the discipline to, to work for such a long-term goal, you know, I would have wanted something that came faster or, you know, I got the fruits of it faster, but now yeah. 
um, you know, especially digging out of the surgery holes like that added has added a lot of extra time to me achieving my goals. And I'm fine with that. And I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think that's it. First prep experience. Like what was your food like? What was your exercise like? So um, do you mean like the whole like many months leading up to it or just like the yeah, I guess give us like an overview. Um, so, I mean, Adam gives me my plans, my workout yeah. plans. So, you know, lifted six days a week and, and, um, followed a meal plan to try to put some weight on it. Cause I was actually too small when we first started working yeah. together, like <laughs> under, underweight and too lean and everything. So, um, we put on a, like tried to put on some weight and put some muscle back on me. So, um, and then it's all meal plans, which I yeah. love because, you know, I'd love to be able to like, yes, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I know exactly what I'm going to follow. And yeah. I love it. You know, lots of flexibility within it, of course, but yeah, um, yeah follow, follow the meal plan. And then as of course, after we got closer, modifying to hone in on where we want to end up and everything. So, uh, but yeah, my experience with that was great though. There was one week where we were really low on carbs and it was, my family didn't like me very much. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like me very much either, yeah. but sorry. So, you have any, like, how would you get through that when you were, you know, tired uh, and you weren't motivated yeah. do you have a mantra or anything? Did I have what? Like a mantra or something oh. that would remind you your why? Um, I was able to do, I had to. I just needed to be alone a lot, mostly, yeah. like, you know, so I kind of as not gracefully, but gracefully let them know my whole family know, Hey, you guys, I just, I got to go eat by myself in my room, help yourself to dinner, you know, whatever I needed to do to just kind of like not be around them. <laughs> not, not that yeah. they were the, it was me. I was the problem, right? I just, I just kind of needed to unplug and like, um, go, you know, go take a bath or something. And yeah. Um, work through I knew there was an end of course it's just counting the days and working through those few days and then finally get to the the carb days and yay yeah. <laughs> you know, I like that when again. you said you take a bath because sometimes during prep yeah. it, when you get in your head and you're hungry and tired you almost need to create a little bit of space to yes. just sit and then once you get through that and you can sit with it, maybe sit with the hunger, sit with, sit with the low carb, yeah. you can train your mind to just sit peacefully through that. It's yeah. It's easier rather than trying to fight against it, kind of accept oh, totally. the prep. Exactly. That's, yeah, I kind of had to do that. I had to go create my Zen spots and Zen moments to get through it because I was like, all right, the time is going to pass either which way. How do I want it to pass? I, I want to make it as pleasant as possible, you know, so, um, you know, and for everyone around me, you know, so I, I knew that I was just not very nice. So I, I needed to go away. I needed a time out. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, this was so nice talking with you and it's exciting that you're competing again in nine days. I know you're not Thank very you. active on Instagram, but are you active on yeah. any social media platforms that we can follow you on? Um, I, I'm not, I need to be talked into it again. I got off of them like about eight years ago and I, ha I just haven't quite like reengaged, okay. but I, I mean, I am on Instagram, but I just, I don't, um, I don't really use it that much, but you know, maybe you can talk me into it. Okay. <laughs> so. I do love Instagram to connect with other athletes in the sport because it's almost like everyone's yeah. on Instagram and yeah. Yeah, it, Social media has its pros and cons, but I find the good yeah. in it. And I do see pros in my life, at least. So I'm not going to pressure you to get on social media. For but sure. But we will put your handle in the description on this. So if anyone wants to follow okay. along with Carrie. And if you're in the Denver area, you will probably see her compete on stage because she's hitting all of those shows. And then yeah. Masters Nationals at the end of July. Is that right? It, yes, that's the one we're targeting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Deb's mm -hmm. competing at that one. So you'll see her there. Yay. Yay. <laughs> That's yeah. So awesome. is, is there anything else you wanted to leave our listeners with? No, just that I love you. And I love angel competition bikinis. You guys have been such Aww. an amazing support for me. I mean, truly like the, the coming to the Olympia watch party, that was my first intro into the people and the culture of the sport. Before that, I had just been training through my coach and which was online and I didn't get to know the people. Yet, yeah. You know, and I'd gone to watch shows, but again, I was kind of an outsider looking in. I wasn't really mm -hmm. in it 
at all until I came to the watch party. So that to me was a big yes, say yes moment of like driving myself out all by myself, meeting new people and, you know, meeting you and seeing how it all works and everything. It just, that was such a beautiful introduction that I'm so grateful for. And then, you know, then I opened the next door and into the fashion show and into all of this. And, you know, I know your motto is confidence and that's really what you guys helped me get. So I'm so grateful. Yeah. Well, that makes me so happy to hear. And <laughs> there is something special about athletes in this sport. We all yeah. kind of have a similar story. So it's like the immediate camaraderie when we all get together. And especially with yeah. the Angel Fashion Show, like your energy that you brought to it is, it's hard to explain the energy of the Angel Fashion Show, but you were so amazing. Yeah. I want to thank you for oh, thank all you. of your energy and, you know, driving out from Colorado and coming to the Olympia watch party, <laughs> having the courage to say yes. You know, that's, it's hard for yeah. us to say yes to the unknown, but you had the courage to do it and look where you are now. Yeah. I mean, everybody should, cause I'm not unique in that. You know, we all are special and like should just try all the things in life. I know like sometimes in life we, an opportunity comes along and we might think, Oh, but I'm not X, Y, Z enough. Insert anything you want in there. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not tall enough. I'm not popular enough. I'm not smart enough. Anything. Right. Like, yeah. and, and that can hold us back from trying things, but why? Because you're the only you there is. There's no one youer than you, right? So yeah. <laughs> say yes and go try yes. it because you just have no idea where that can go, you know, and what opportunities and people you're going to meet and, you know, just all the great energy that comes from it. Say yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I think I was telling you at the fashion show that, you know, if you're ever in decision or if I'm in decision fatigue, I say, what is the bigger life? And then that's how yeah. I make the decision. You know, I love always that. try for to open your doors. Don't ever close down. So I love that. Yes, advice. that's perfect. Keep expanding. Yeah. Okay. Well, with <laughs> that, thank you, and good luck to you in nine days. Happy almost. Thank 50. you so much. Thank you, yeah. Kara. <laughs>